Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and today I'm gonna run through five small things that I would never go overlanding without. And some of these I'm sure you've thought of already, they're kind of obvious, but there's a couple more I'm willing to bet that you haven't thought of, and I'll explain why they are essential and why I've found them to be so helpful for my years on the road. So if you've ever wondered the little things that I bring with me, stick around, I'll get into all the details right now. Before I get to the first item, don't forget to check out my previous video where I talk about five items that I bring with me on the road. Item number one that I will never go overlanding without, it's really simple, it's a tape measure. And so this is just a standard ordinary no frills tape measure. And this is actually the one I use to build the interior cabinets. And you might wonder like, what use is a tape measure? Well, it turns out for me, a tape measure just brings me a lot of enjoyment. When you're overlanding, you bump into tons of people out there with all kinds of vehicles. Especially when you're in Africa, you meet Europeans, they've got Defender 110s, they've got Land Rover Troopies, they've even got big box campers. And I'm a car guy, I was always really curious to learn, and I wanted to compare and contrast what they had for living space versus what I had. How big is their fridge compared to my fridge and things like that. And so once the two vehicles are parked next to each other and you set up camp, I personally get a lot of enjoyment out of running a tape measure, you know, how wide is my Jeep? Then I walk over and say, how wide is a Defender 110? And things like that, you know, what's my ground clearance? What's their ground clearance? All of those kind of just curious, fun, let's learn, let's see what the differences are. I personally enjoy that. As well as that, the tape measure comes in extremely handy when you're looking to buy or modify things for your vehicle and you wanna know what's available. So once I was down in Southern Africa, I wanted an extra table. And I was, so I was on the lookout for a folding table, but I really wanted it to fit inside my Jeep in the center aisle. And so I spent a long time going to outdoor stores, hardware stores, camping stores, and every time I would run my tape measure over what was available before I found one that would fit. Same story, I wanted to buy a Dutch oven, you know, like a big steel pot so that I could cook on the fire, and I needed to make sure it would fit inside my cabinets. So I needed the tape measure to make sure I could buy things that actually fit. Really simple little item. This actually sits on my center console and I found I used it two or three times a week. The second little item on my must have list, I learned this the hard way from Alaska to Argentina. Somehow I forgot about it and then I learned the hard way again in Africa. And it's a simple little USB stick. Nothing fancy, exactly what you think. You know, you plug it into your laptop, you can transfer things onto it and then use it to get documents or whatever onto another computer. And the reason that one of these is so essential is because I can guarantee you'll get to a border or you'll get to an embassy to apply for a visa and they're gonna ask you for some document that you don't have. And it doesn't matter how prepared you are, it's essentially guaranteed they'll ask you for something. I think the Gabon embassy, they wanted a printout of my bank statement. And so what that means is you're gonna jump online, get that document, but then you need to get it printed. And internet cafes are still a thing around the world. I use them a lot in Africa. And so the easiest way to get your documents onto those computers is with a USB stick like this. It just makes life so much easier. You know, you really don't wanna try and do wireless transfers or anything tricky. Just throw your document on a USB stick, take it up to the guy at the front counter and say, could you please print this document for me? It's the fastest and easiest way to solve that problem. And I really find these things essential. Again, this actually sits in my center console. I find that I used it so often when I was on the road. And just on that note, some people recommend bringing a computer printer with you so you can just print out whatever document you need on the spot. And I, I don't like that advice. I think a computer printer is too big, too bulky, uses too much power, and they're kind of finicky as well. I don't imagine they're gonna survive 100,000 miles of dust and corrugations and all of that. So for me, instead of bringing my own printer, I'm just gonna rely on locals having one for me. I'll just be able to transfer the documents as painlessly as possible. The third little item that I would never go on a trip without is just a simple headlamp. And so although my Jeep has lots of lighting on the interior and exterior, 
I find having a headlamp is just extremely handy when you're camping. To be able to have light, you know, but still have your hands free, I feel like it's a game changer. Once you've owned a headlamp, it's pretty hard to go back to not having one. And you can see mine is extremely beat up. The uh, stretchy headband basically isn't stretchy anymore. This is the headlamp I took all the way to Argentina and all the way around Africa. This is a Petzl. Uh, I find these things amazing and I suppose I might have to buy a new one just so I can get a new stretchy band. But also another tip with my headlamp, I actually run rechargeable batteries in this thing. I like it more for the environment. I don't want to be throwing out batteries all over the place. But also once you're around the world, you don't want to have to rely on being able to buy small batteries. Maybe you would find them, but maybe they'd be really low quality and they won't last very long. So I have rechargeables in this and everything else that uses batteries. And I have a tiny little charger for AA and AAA batteries that runs directly off 12 volts. So essentially I'm charging these batteries off my solar panels, which is really nice. The fourth item that I'll never leave home without is actual printed or paper maps of where I'm going. And so this is for British Columbia where I am now. And this is, you know, like a map book of all the back roads and kind of topo and all the mountains. I like this for where I am now, but when I'm going around the world, I really like to have big fold out maps. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for this. I personally just find it more enjoyable to look at a map all folded out like that. And I don't necessarily use it for day-to-day -day driving. That's where the GPS is great. But in the evenings or when I'm talking to other travelers, I love being able to pull out the map and really get some context and some scale. And people will say, you know, you should check out these mountains, then drive this road, then check out this lake. And I'll pull out my highlighter, I'll pull out my Sharpie, and I just start drawing directly on the map. And that's what helps me plan my itinerary and figure out where I'm going next. It's also really helpful when you're at borders or when you're talking to military. Having a map is just a great way to connect with those guys and to really show them, this is where I'm coming from, this is where I'm going. You know, talk to them, be friends with them. It's a great way, it kind of distracts them a little bit so they're gonna forget about trying to bribe money out of you. But it also just is a friendly thing to do and it kind of brings them on board as part of the expedition. Same story goes for the map on my hood. It's been such a great way to just be able to communicate even when there's a big language barrier. So although I don't use printed maps usually for day-to-day -day driving, there's something that I'm always gonna have with me no matter where I go in the world. And the final small item that I'll never leave home without again is some kind of e-reader. In this case, I've got a Kindle. And so when I drove Alaska to Argentina, I rediscovered my love of reading. And I love to read books in the evening when I'm sitting around the campfire, just when I've crawled into bed. And what I figured out pretty quickly was that I needed to carry with me a huge number of real paper books. And in Latin America, it was possible to swap them with other backpackers. At hostels, they usually have a book exchange. That worked okay. But in Africa, there really aren't that many travelers and carrying that many books, it just takes up too much space and it's too much weight. So the answer to that is some sort of digital ebook device. And I bought this one used on Amazon. I think it was $50. I bought it like five years ago. And I love it because it's got a backlight. So it means I can read this in the evening without using my headlamp. And I think this is the base model. I don't even know how big it is, but it literally has a thousand books in it. So for my entire Africa trip, all of my reading in the evenings, I just read on my Kindle, super small, super convenient. It just charges off USB. So again, I'm charging it off my solar panels, which is great. And even though it's as old as it is, this thing lasts, I can probably read two or three books before I even have to plug it in and recharge it again. So it's kind of a non-issue. So for me, for my love of reading, having an electronic reader, really key. So I'm curious to know, had you thought of all five of those or are some a little bit of a shock? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know what items you found essential on your trips that have really made the difference and meant you can spend more time enjoying yourself and less time trying to buy these things when they're difficult to get. 
So if this has been helpful, please do hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And as always, I wanna give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. They help bring these videos to life. They're helping me pay for new camera equipment, microphones, and just to be able to have the time so that I can film all of this and share with you everything I've learned from my years on the road. So there's a link down in the description, check it out. It's just $2 a month is the lowest tier. You get some exclusive perks. And coming up really soon, my Patreons are gonna start hearing about my next trip. I am 99% locked in about where I'm going and what vehicle I'm using. So that's all coming up soon. Patreons are going to get exclusive details long before I start talking about it publicly here on YouTube. So until next time, stay safe out there. Hope you can get some adventures and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.